should be tired but I have more energy in evening class for some reason <laughs> okay so um, our class is uh, stat 145 basic statistic and your section is four zero two I sent you email uh, today Anyway, you should have that email. If you don't have email, just ask me. I will send that email again to you. How many of you read that email? Okay, good. So I attached the syllabus, and I talked about the first day be, uh, to be a kind of important uh, class because uh, if you miss this class, you will not know um, about um, kind of our rule in this class or uh, some you know, assignment and how, uh, you know, um, package works, everything like that. So I'm going to explain everything today. And today I'm not going to teach. I just will go through syllabus, explain everything, and you can ask all your questions. And uh, in that email, also the most important part was about um, email, or how you send me an email. So I said in subject of that uh, any email, if you are sending any email to me, subject of email, write down a stat 145 section 402. Uh, because I have uh, six classes this semester. If you don't send me a kind of correct or proper uh, subject, I may even don't even uh, open your email because I have to go through all the list of a student to see which class you are in, which section you are in. So please do this if you want me to respond you back as soon as possible. Um, so I will repeat that four times today. I will because this is important for me. So I don't want you later complain. Oh, she didn't email me back. If I don't email back, because of that, because I don't open. Uh, any email either without kind of that subject and also the email should be sent through UNM email I'm not responding to Gmail Hotmail Yahoo any other kind of you know service okay so these are something basic uh, I had to mention but important so I will start with a kind of um, introducing myself my name is Andy Sher. My last name is Dadashi. Okay, so I'm Iranian from Iran. My ethnicity is Persian. Um, I raised in Iran. I finished my bachelor degree in Iran. I moved to India. I was there for three years finished my first master's degree. I applied uh, to UNM and some other universities in America for a PhD program. I got accepted to the PhD program, a statistic program. So most of my background, all my background is mathematical statistics, mathematics and statistics. And then uh, as soon as I got accepted, I mean, I got this job here in Gallup. Um, I, I got my second master to be able to, you know, get hired. So I have two master's degree. And um, now still I'm a student. I'm in PhD program, but PhD of computer science. So I changed my field to computer science to be able to take some more online classes because math and statistics doesn't have that much um, online classes, uh, classes. So that's why. So yes, this is my kind of background. If you have any question, you can ask me. Out of curiosity, maybe. I used to talk more about myself, but not anymore. Anything? <coughs> no, I don't have. 
<laughs> no, look, I'm teaching here six classes. I'm studying PhD two days of the week. I'm going to Albuquerque. I'm here on main, uh, on this campus just Monday, Wednesday, and this semester I'm teaching Friday to Tuesday, Thursday. I'm going to be in Albuquerque. So my life is like <laughs> really like. Uh, I don't know how I can handle, you know, having a child and still I cannot believe some people can do it. My mom did that. She was in two program, two uh, bachelor program. She had me and my elder brother. She was teaching and she was wife too. So all of this, I, I cannot believe how people can do it. Yeah, but I cannot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so I will go through the syllabus, we will um, uh, walk through everything step by step, explain everything, go through the uh, package that I'm like um, kind of using in this class. Uh, so the syllabus that I, I attached in the email, if you haven't seen the email, you should go back, check your email. Also, I will send it again tonight, but please um, check that email, we will have the syllabus. Uh, so everything will be like um, available in that email. Okay, so here is my name, my last name. This is the time for our class. We are in Calvin Hall, uh, Calvin Hall 194, and this is my office. My office is in Gearley Hall. So when you um, go to Gearley Hall, there is this bookstore. Front of bookstore, there is a huge corridor. Um, IT is on the right side, ARC is on the left side. After IT, uh, there is a smaller corridor on the right side. My office is there. Even in that huge corridor, I put some sign on the wall with a direction to my office. You can't easily find it. So you need to know my office because let's say you have a question about your homework, anything, anything. You want to meet me, so I have my office hours. You can find me there. Uh, my office hours are, as I said, I'm here just Monday, Wednesday, and this semester Friday, but I don't have office hour on Friday, but still you can send me an email if you need to see me after my class on Friday. We can adjust some, uh, something. Uh, so Monday, Wednesday, 8 to 9 a.m., you can, I am free, you can send me an email, so I will be in my office at 3.30, 5.15, exactly before this class. So if you have any question uh, related to homework assignment or anything else, just send me an email. We can um, kind of uh, adjust kind of time and we can uh, have a kind of meeting maybe. Um, so this is my email address and we are in a staff 145 402 and this will be the subject of email you are sending to me. And, uh, okay, this one is the requirement for this class, this part. So, for this class, you don't have to know advanced mathematics. You just need to know some basic step, uh, mathematics. Like, what is the absolute value? What is the radical? These are something basic. Maybe most of you learned this in, this in high school or some of you in college uh, took math 9900, 120. Some basic math, not too complicated math. Uh, so what absolute value does? Do you remember? Some of you now remember. Huh. <laughs> What is absolute value? What is the absolute value of negative three? See, positive three. Correct, so what absolute value does? It changes the sign. Yeah, all the numbers negative, positive becomes positive. Or the most important, kind of most proper definition for absolute value is, for example, absolute, absolute value of negative three is the distance from zero to negative three. So let's count from zero to negative three. You have one unit, two unit, three units. Three will be the value of, absolute value of negative three. So the distance from zero to that specific number will be absolute value of that number. So this is the definition of absolute value. So you should know what is absolute value, radical, 
these kind of things because we have formula with radical. You should know what is radical. A square root. So, um, these are some you know basic knowledge of math you should uh, you need for this class. Not more than this. Um, learning objective and outcome. These are something you should read. And uh, we will go through everything, every section of this, every uh, section of this class. So um, we will review those two uh, later. And uh, if you need accommodation with ARC, please do that as soon as possible. So our first exam will be 25th February. So you should be done with all paperwork three weeks before that. So I can uh, send all the documents, all the sorry exams to ARC. So I should, I'm that kind of person, I'm always um, doing everything way ahead of my schedule. So I don't want to do anything in last minute. So please, you know, um, make it clear if you want accommodation and uh, we can talk about that. So textbook and supporting material. In this class, we are going to use the basic pra practice of a statistic eight edition. And uh, I'm not using the hard copy of book. I'm just using a package, online package. And this online package has an ebook, online book. And it's so convenient for you rather than carrying this huge book with you everywhere. You definitely have four other classes if you are a full time a student. So you cannot, you know, it's so um, kind of inconvenient if you have all this books uh, with you. This online book helps you to, you know, have book everywhere with you. Uh, you can just log into a computer here on campus and you can have access um, to ebook through your uh, sapling package. Okay, so sapling package um, is, I can say, most of part of your class is in sapling uh, package. All your assignments, assignments are homeworks, online homeworks, online quizzes. And these are part of your overall grades. So you should take all of them, you should finish all of them, and these are helping you to take your exams and you know uh, perform good uh, for your exams. So beside that, we have pre in class exams. We will go through everything, I will talk about everything uh, later. So this package, okay. You have two options. One. You can go to bookstore, purchase the package, if you know you are going to stay in this class, okay? Maybe after I taught all this class, you drop it. Who knows? So if you know and you are sure that you are going to stay in this class, you will go to the bookstore, purchase the package because we have some online assignment. If you are not sure or some student have problem with financial, you know, aid or something like that, you, you don't have the money to purchase it right now. There is another option. There is a 14 days trial, and I mentioned that in the email. So this 14 days trial give you access to uh, the sapling package, and you can take your all assignment. If there is any due date for any of this assignment, you can go through the package without paying for that. And whenever you are sure that you are going to stay in this class, you can go to bookstore, purchase this package. Also, I say bookstore, some of the students can find a better deal online. But if you want to find a better deal, deal online, you should make sure you are using the same ISBN of the package bookstore has if you want to search it. So what is ISBN? ISBN is a kind of code for book, for package, anything. That's kind of ID for that specific, you know, product. So you ask bookstore, what is the ISBN of this package? And then you get that ISBN, write it down, go home, or search, and compare the price to see if you can find a better deal. One of my students the other semester could find a good deal on Amazon Prime. Maybe you can find it too. So uh, yes, just make sure you have a correct ISBN of package. Because if you ask ISBN of book, they will give you another ID which is specifically for book. So make sure you have a correct one. Uh, and also, if you are going to sign up for trial, 
you should use the same email later when you are going to buy access and sign in like permanently same email address if you use one email address for trial another email address for you know uh, access you are buying it will be two accounts two separated accounts some of your homework here some of your homework here and i cannot do anything about that and i have to delete one of them so be careful use just one email for everything okay is that clear do you have any question now Yes. Are you saying that that sampling package includes the basics, uh, the basic practices, statistics, textbook? That's included yes. in the sampling package? Yes, textbook. Yes, online textbook. It's exactly the same as the hard copy of book, that huge book. Mm -hmm. It's exact same. You just have it online, you know, and I will show you how it works. So it's so convenient. And also, when you are taking homework or quizzes, if you want a hint, it will direct you to the page of, uh, of I mean, direct you to the same question or same def definition from the book. And um, it's really good, I, I like it. Um, do you have any other question? Sure? Oh, so, let's see, oh, this one. If you want to um, uh, register, for sampling, either trial or uh, you have the access, uh, permanent access, kind of, uh, you should go through this instruction. Use this link and then it will direct you to the uh, like registration uh, site and then follow something like you should choose University of New Mexico, Gallup, and then step by step you will choose everything. Um, and uh, at the end, I think. Uh, because your section is 402. Oh, I didn't change it here. So look, I wrote down the key code for section 400 is 402. So I edited just 30 minutes ago, I edited this and I uploaded to Sapling the correct one. So section 402 is my last name, lowercase 402. Okay? So your section is 402 and you should use this key code to get into your own section. Otherwise, uh, if you don't choose it correctly, you will be in other sections or it will uh, send you to something unknown group. Send your account to some unknown group and maybe I cannot find it. Okay, so be careful. Your section is 402. You will write down uh, my last name, Dadashi, 402, all lowercase. If you have any problem that I don't predict any problem, uh, if you follow everything, um, you will not have any problem. If you have problem, there's a support here. Uh, you can click on this link and uh, find the phone number, contact them. And in worst case scenario, if they are not solving your problem, just email me and I will, you know, uh, take care of everything, okay? So now, if you don't have any question, I will, Go to the package. Do you have questions? So this is a sampling package uh, website. So switch to a student. Okay, you will see some home a home page like this. Okay, and then this is upcoming assignment and event. There are some due dates for this. The due date is January 28th. By that time, I will finish chapter one and this is the final date that you can take your assignment. And after that, if you don't take it before that, you will receive zero. Math review, what is math review? Because you need to review some basic math, I put that as a homework for you and this is part of your credit. If I didn't say this is a part of credit, if I didn't, you know, put that as a part of credit, a student would not, you know, take this. But now, if you don't take this, you will have like, you will lose part of, part, part of your overall score. So there's a due date for this math review, and uh, you can just take it after this class, you know. And this is just a kind of warm up for you to remember what kind of math you have, I mean, you had previous day. You know, there were some of my students, they didn't take math for three, four years. You know, that's a kind of warm-up for you. 
So first take this and kind of get rid of this, finish this, okay? And then as soon as I um, start chapter one, uh, you can go through your homework and practice quiz. Okay, so I will go through this. Uh, let me show you the ebook before I forget. So if you scroll down on the right side, here there's an the ebook. I click on that. <coughs> And here is the ebook. I was showing chapter 12 to previous uh, class. That's why it started with chapter 12. If you go to this part, content, you will see all chapters of book. This book has three parts, actually more than three parts, sorry. Uh, five parts. I'm going through three parts of that. So if you click on uh, part one, Chapter one, two, up to seven are under uh, part one of this book. And then part two, part three, and then if you click on this, it will hide the uh, content this time. So, um, let's see. If we go to part one, chapter one, the first page of chapter is this one. And this is exact same as the hard copy of book, like everything exactly the same. This is just online version of this book. So, oh, you know what? I wish I remembered to tell my other student in other class. This chapter summary, chapter one summary, I like it. So it will briefly explain everything in just one page. So just remember, um, this is really good. I like this. So for each chapter, you will see chapter summary. And I should remember to talk about this with other classes. I forgot. Yeah, actually, you know what? The good thing I'm recording. So morning also I recorded my lecture, but I was uh, trying to record all the classes to see which class is better. You know, I want to upload this for you um, because I have online class uh, for second half of semester. So I'm going to upload this. So by end of tonight, I will have all the lectures, you know, for you. I think I will upload that on YouTube because UNM Learn sometimes has problem maintenance or all of this. I don't like it. So that's why I'm going to upload that to YouTube and I try my best to remove all advertisement, whatever they have, you know, to make it more convenient for you. So if I upload that, my other classes will understand there is this chapter summary here because I didn't talk about any morning class. So I will upload this. Um, this recording. Okay, so this is the book and let's go through this column. The first one shows all the due date and activities that you have to take. This one, if you click on that, it will show all the due dates for you. This one, this and kind of, this is a part that I upload all the notes, news, every announcement. So if you click on this, and then you, you see that there are 18 items here. And open this, okay, here. There are the syllabus for my three of my classes, and your class is 402. And why I put these two here because, okay, so let's say you cannot attend this class next week. So you can come to my class in the morning, just once or two times, you know, that doesn't matter. Just, you know, to kind of cover your absence and not be behind of class. So if you go to syllabus 400, you will see what time they have their class. You can attend that class. If you go to 401, you can see what time they have their classes and you can attend that class. You know, if you have an emergency and you cannot be here, uh, one of these classes. You can just go to other section. Is that clear? Okay. So that's why I put all the syllabus here so you can see what time is my other class um, in the same day. Um, so there is this statistical table. We are going to use that from chapter three. If you are going to print anything, print this one and keep with, yours, with you. 
always when you come to this class because from chapter three we are going to use this okay this is a statistical table we will go through that later and i will show you when we talk about that and then all the chapters pdf so what are these pdf these pdfs are kind of um it comes exactly from book and it it is just brief version of the chapter you know those part that i am teaching and i thought it will be you know um it is important so i put that in those pdfs so for each of this chapter i made my own pdf so um most of questions or examples there are uh, theory like it's for understanding it's not problem solving the problem solving question will be in class i will write down on the board and we will go through problem solving in class those questions in pdfs are mostly for uh, kind of understanding and mostly kind of i can say conceptual uh, so as you see you have chapter one two three four five and then six and seven are not there because we are not going through some of the chapters from book just these chapters just this and then the announcement for the first in class exam second in class exam third in class exam and then as you see here first exam 25th february we will have three in class exams and they will be on paper and then um mm, what else um whole class section i mean whole class time and there's one thing i should mention now before you know uh, that day comes uh, i should say exams are so important for me um i want my student to be on time for the exam after i other student all the students starts their exam i will close that door and no one can come to the class because i don't want anyone distract other students uh, it seems so harsh but i'm just you know uh, doing my on time student um a favor i don't want them to be distracted by you know some noise and someone you know just uh, come to the class today so that's your responsibility five minutes uh kind of um be here five minutes earlier than exam okay five minutes to ten minutes so um you will not uh, miss anything okay so uh, exam two, exa in class exam two will be on first April, and just these chapters. We are not going back to to the previous chapter, so it's not a kind of cumulative. Um, final exam is also just four chapters, and um, in this situation for final exam, we need some knowledge from chapter three. I'm not going to give you direct question from chapter three one uh, to one, but you need knowledge of chapter three chapter three is the most important chapter the most important chapter if you don't understand chapter three you will have problem for chapter six 15 16 17. so just um kind of uh be careful don't miss any class during those time and write down everything and kind of be a uh, hundred person uh, in the class Okay, so these are all the announcement or all the material we have. And actually, you know what? In syllabus also, I mentioned that teaching material will be here. Sapling uh, news group. So you can find it there. Do you have any questions so far? It's too much of things to memorize, huh? But still, you have syllabus. Whenever you forget something, you can go back and see what was, you know, um, what what I was talking about. <coughs> okay, so your grade will be here, and then this is the uh, way your grade book uh, will look like, and then forty-five percent of your overall grade are uh, is your in-class exam. 45% of your overall and then for homework you have 25% of overall grade and then for quiz quizzes you have 30% of overall so 55% of overall grade is online assignment and then 45% is in class exams okay and then look at this 
extra credit. It's good for you. You will receive free extra credit if you go through all these learning curves. And learning curves are some um, kind of, it will give you some questions related to each section of, for example, chapter one. And then it will, if you had a wrong answer, it will show you same question again and again and again until you get it right. And it will, at the end, it will tell you what is your weakness in this chapter, what section you should work on, what is your experience. So you are working kind of, you know, practicing and also you will receive extra credit if you finish all of them. Okay. So also if you finish part of it, you will receive partial credit out of three. Okay. So um, I let you go through all of this to see what is that. And the due date for learning curve, let's see here. So this is the math review. The due date is 28th, January. Okay, chapter one, you have learning curve for chapter one, homework for chapter one, quiz for chapter one, and all of these are stat keepers. As you see, there's not any deadline for these, but there are some deadline for this. The learning curve has a kind of um, until the end of semester. So you have until that time to receive extra credit, you know, but I don't like to, you know, do anything, as I said, in last second. Please don't do that too, because everything all of a sudden piles up and you cannot, you know, handle that. Now, the first two, three weeks of classes are the, you know, kind of easiest uh, time for you to take care of uh, lots of things. Uh, so for example, learning care, just, you know, start on learning here before even I start chapter one. Why not? It will be a kind of, um, um, you will know what I'm going to talk about if you start uh, learning here ahead of class. And most of my students really like that learning here. There are lots of things that, you know, kind of increase your knowledge um, if you take that. And then stat tutors also are a good help for you. If you have extra time, you can go through them and uh, it will like teach you uh, those specific chapters, uh, those specific sections in each chapter. And then for chapter two, we have all the same thing. For chapter three, and look, all of these are open. And let's say, you know next month you will be busy or you are going to miss a specific section uh, class. So I have all, because I have all the schedule for all, you know, entire semester, you will know what week, uh, what chapter, you will know all of this. So you can predict, okay, she's going to, during that time I'm busy, she's going to teach chapter four, and maybe I'm busy, I cannot take the assignment that time. Take it earlier. Study chapter, uh, for example, that chapter, and. Uh, take all your assignment in advance ahead of class. Why not? You have a chance to be ahead of class. That's why in my statistic classes, I never accept any excuses because most of my students are really, really on time and good with their assignment, online assignment. And I cannot give extension to just one or two students. It will be un unfair to those students who are always active and who are always on time. So try your best to not write me a three, four paragraph email about your life situation, problem, and asking at the end in last sentence, can I have extension? So that's really, you know, unacceptable and I cannot extend at all. And I'm in most of the situation, I'm not even emailing back because I already talked about this before in class. If I want to give extension, that's for all the class, not just one or two students, okay? And also you have all the dates, so you can be ahead of class if you think you will be busy and you will have some uh, problem later. Um, and uh, let's see what we have. Uh, do you have any question so far? Um, 
I don't think it's, it will be like that. I'm not sure. That's a good question, but I'm not sure. You should try to see how it works. But I know the overall score is out of 300. Sometimes you can even exceed 300 and you will reach 1,500 points for each learning curve because some of learning curves are so easy. You know, after 10 questions, you reach 300 easily. And I don't know if you can, you know, save it. I don't think you can save it because it will continuously ask you question over and over and over after, you know. And I'm sure it gives you a hint, you know, for each question, but I don't think it will. Yeah. But try it to see how it works. Um, and I haven't seen this, any setting uh, to change that from my side, you know. So that's why I don't think there's any um, this kind of things. Okay, so now let's talk about homework and quizzes. We already have uh, the uh, kind of uh, assignment part in the syllabus. I will show you later when we go back to the syllabus, but now that because I mean uh, something I want to explain that now so for homework um for homeworks you have actually that's just kind of you know so easy for you so convenient for you you can take the homeworks as much as you want as many times as you want in finite um, kind of trial and it is also uh, unlimited time so you are not uh, forced to finish that and you can always save it and then submit it later, but you have to submit it before the due date in order to receive the credit. So you can easily get 100% on homework, correct? If you spend time. So you have extra credit, you can get 100% on homework. So this class is such an easy class, huh? And also I can say it's not just me as a teacher saying that, I always review my students uh, evaluation and that's the most important part of my teaching. So two weeks ago, my evaluation was out. So I reviewed and one of my students, she or he wrote me almost one paragraph and it was really beautiful, whatever um, uh, she was, or he was talking about. And then one part she said, I don't understand how a person can fail her class when there are too much opportunity to have an A or A plus in this class. So if one student is saying something like this, and I know most of my students, my students' uh, evaluation are always, always like incredibly amazing. The three class of three classes of my last semester, I even didn't have one negative review at all. Not even one negative review. So if three classes they are, you know, performing this good, each class was 30 students, so 90 students. Imagine if they could do good in my class. So majority of the students are doing good. So you have lots of opportunity to really ace this class or rock this class or whatever it is you can say. So you have any opportunity, right? And now as you see homework is unlimited attempt and it's not timed for quizzes. There are multiple choices questions questions are multiple choice so there are four answer as you know for multiple choice question i couldn't give you unlimited trial because after four trial you will definitely understand what's the correct answer so that's why we have three trial for for the quiz and then the bad part is that you cannot choose the answer randomly you should think about that because if you get it wrong you will receive five percent penalty for that question for that question so if you have three wrong you will receive 15 percent penalty for that specific question but the good thing about quiz is what is this <laughs> it's on time <laughs> you are not you know limited to time so think and um, if you cannot figure out the question don't give up research this is uh, you know as a student I'm telling you if I cannot uh, understand some material from my own you know classes that I'm taking sometimes I open 
five, six Google pages and search different, you know, kind of sentences, write down different sentences. And you know, each page of Google sometimes give you 15 websites. And believe it, uh, believe it or not, I will open each single website to see which one is more kind of um, understandable for me. So some basic, you know, uh, courses like a statistic, like basic math or other, you know, undergraduate courses, they are everywhere, everywhere. Just the first page of Google will give you lots of hints, lots of good resources. I mean, besides that, you have sapling, and there are lots of resources here, but there's still lots of resources on Google you can find. So don't give up. Just read about that question. Maybe you can find, you know, a way to answer the question correctly. Okay. So these are about homework and assignments, uh, homework and quiz. So we have online assignment, homework and quizzes, and they have due date, and they are part of your grade. We have online learning care for each chapter. Those are for extra credit, okay? Do you have any question now? Sure. Um, I think we are done with sampling. And uh, look at this. These are the last things uh, I uploaded here. And um, we have the calendar here. Uh, I think I, I talked about everything in sampling. Just ask me if you have any questions. Okay, so let's go back to the syllabus. So please follow this instruction when you want to log into sampling. Either trial or if you have access code, you can use the same instruction. Okay, email, this one is important. See, this is the fourth time I'm talking about this. In subject of email, please write down a staff on board five, <coughs> section 402. You don't need to name, write down your name or anything. Why I say that? Okay, let me talk about this. When I was undergraduate student, I, I did lots of things that now I'm listing them as a rule. Let's don't do that because I did that and now I'm a teacher, I know it was horrible. So I will send email to my instruct instructor and in subject, I will write down, help. <laughs> and email, now still, I feel embarrassed of that. I swear, I feel so embarrassed. And then I was not just sending once, two times, three times with different, you know, subject to grab attention. I need help. Please email me back. So <laughs> don't do that. Because now I'm a teacher, it's really bad, really bad. And then, um, not just for me, my husband also became teacher last year, and he's talking about the same thing. I said, "Do you see that? It's horrible. As a teacher, you cannot stand this." And how I did all of this when I was, you know, younger, and not just bachelor degree for my first master degree. God, I would like be behind their door, like. So bad, so bad. <laughs> yeah. So these are all my experience. I, I was not a perfect person. <laughs> okay. So uh, what else? Um, uh, also, did I talk about? Uh, okay. Some student. Um, see, now I told you if you don't, if you cannot attend this class, you have options. You can go to the morning class you can go to another class at two o'clock um so if you really cannot do it even you cannot attend some other classes um please don't send me an email and explain your situation to me because sometimes i read the email and it's so sad i see that they are you know they have problem but i don't know what to say i don't know really uh how to respond to say, oh, I'm so sorry that you cannot attend my class. Or it's so weird situation. I swear it's so weird. Most of the time I cannot, I don't have any response. And I just 
sometimes I said, oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you or something like that. It makes me sad sometimes uh, to see they really had problem issue in their life. But uh, explaining all of that to me, um, I don't think it's kind of correct, you know, way to explain why you didn't attend the class. If you cannot attend the class, okay, you know the rule, you know you cannot have more than three accents, you know everything. No, it's not like explaining to me will not change anything uh, that much. Um, so I will go to actually attendance and I will talk about how many accents you can have or everything. So evaluation and grading method, we have 55% as I said homework and online quizzes on sapling and then each in class exams are 15%, okay? So the passing grade is 70% uh, or better. And then here is um, about homework, how many trial you have, quizzes, how many trial you have, what percentage will be kind of as a penalty. And then after due date, uh, definitely, you, if you <coughs> didn't submit anything, you will receive zero. You have to submit your homework um, or you, can, you have to finish that. Um, so in class exam, we have three in class exams. And I talked about that be on time to the class. And then exam is closed book, closed notes. And then if you, uh, if you have to miss any class. Okay, the final exam, we don't have any makeup exam for the final. So I'm going to talk about makeup exam. But for first exam and second exam, so let let me explain uh, what how the exams work. So we will have exam one day, like Monday, and then I will solve the exam, go through all the question on Wednesday. So if you want to make up exam after Wednesday, it's not fair to other students, okay? Because you already will know what type of um, questions will be in the exam. So if you want to make up exam, it will be exactly one day after that Monday, for example, okay? So you should let me know in advance so we can, you know, uh, arrange something for you and you should have a really good excuse. You cannot just say, I cannot take the exam because I'm not ready for the exam, you know? And uh, I will go through everything and uh, so, <coughs> so this is about miss, missing the exam. Just please re let me know prior to the exam so I will know I should send your exam to the testing center because I will not be here on Tuesday, Thursday, as I said. So if you are taking the exam on Tuesday, I will not be here, so I have to arrange something for you. So extra credit, we talked about, oh, no, sorry, exam cards. Exam card for th those in class exams, you can bring a card with, your, uh, with you. So in this card, you can write down whatever you think you cannot memorize for the exam, like formula, some important things, you know, both sides of the card, three by five. And then for final, you can have a bigger card, five by eight, okay? So for both first two exams, you can have a smaller card, both sides for final also, bigger card, but both sides. Um, any questions so far? Sure? Okay. So you please read this part on your own. It's explaining about how uh, the grades um, works and if you can receive A plus or not. And uh, for exams, you should always show your work, uh, specifically in this semester, in this class, because all my students are packed, most of my classes. Here I have actually like a student, not that much. So my previous class was so big and wide. So each student, when they had an exam, they had their own desk. But this semester, maybe you have to sit beside each other. So I don't want to question any of my students, oh, where you found this answer, from where you found this answer, or you know, just have a doubt of, oh, did she or he cheated? Why you wrote down the point, just final answer. So if you show all your work to me, it's a proof that you did everything on your own. So for exams, please show your works when it's kind of problem solving. Uh, it's kind of, you know, yeah, problem solving because the multiple choice questions 
just you're choosing the correct answer. But uh, for the problem solving, please show step by step what you are doing in order to receive a uh, full, you know, <coughs> complete grade. Calculator. So in this class, we don't need a fancy calculator. Just a simple or scientific calculator will be enough. And also, um, you can um, borrow calculator from office there. There is an art and science uh, office administration. You can go there and they ask you for a deposit. And uh, when you return back the calculator, uh, they will return back the deposit. Okay, so you just go there as soon as possible. There are lots of you know, math classes in this university. So there are limited calculator. Just, uh, have your calculator and then uh, during exam definitely you you should use your own calculator no phone nothing like that and uh, uh, during the exam and during the class when I ask you to for example solve uh, something for me and give me the answer it's more proper if you have your own calculator with you rather than working on your phone it's more professional if you have your own calculator so uh, that's about calculator. This is the deadline for dropping the class if you want. And you can click on this link, a student behavior. I, I, I didn't have any problem with my students so far. And uh, you obviously know how to behave in this class. Um, where's the laptop? Oh, here. This is the thing that I added this semester. From now on, in my classes, I don't let anyone use laptop or have uh, their laptop open. Now, Today is okay, you know, but during the lecture from next uh, class, uh, please don't have laptop um, front of you. And um, if you can bring your laptop after before class if you want to show any questions on sampling to me, ask questions. So you can do that, but during the class, just uh, keep everything like closed and um, uh, like um, I don't want anyone to see to look at the screen or anything like that. Um, attendance, uh, so three absences <coughs> or more. Um, okay, uh, I want to say something. I don't want to be that needed in my house. Okay, so if you have three absences or more, I have two options. I will drop you from the class or it will have a negative impact on your grade. So it depends on you know how many absences you have and uh, what happened exactly and why you had too many absences. Depends on that. So um, if you have all, uh, if you attend all the classes, if you don't have any absences, uh, this is a good part. You will receive one extra credit. See. This is really good in this class so far for extra credit, okay? And uh, yeah, uh, and uh, you will receive that uh, by end of semester after <coughs> all the attendance and all the absence. Okay, any question? Is there any question? No question really? <laughs> How come my morning class, they were like question, asking me questions a thousand times? And now we will finish our class probably earlier because you don't have any questions. <laughs> no, really, if you ask questions, we, we can, you know, be on time. I don't want to, actually it's an evening class, that's okay if I uh, let you go earlier. <laughs> but, but still, ask me questions. Um, I like asking classes. I love when my students ask too much of questions. It makes me uh, feel that I'm doing something in the class, you know? And then those kind of questions help me to talk about something maybe I forgot or, you know, I didn't pay attention. So I want you to ask me questions. So lecture video, we already talked about that. Probably I'm going to upload this one. Is that recording yet? It's still recording. <laughs> Good, uh -huh. thank you. Yeah, previous class I was recording and then I don't know, for some reason I went back and one of my students said it's not recording anymore. And I lost the previous class. It was pretty good too. But this one is much better actually. <laughs> this one is much better. 
Yeah, because the first class was early in the morning, so I forgot to talk about some of things, like that summary content in each <laughs> chapter. So I forgot to talk about that, and I forgot to talk about my other classes that they can attend. So look at these topics from the book. These are part one, part two, part three of books that I said uh, these chapters are from part one, this chapter part two, this chapter part three, we are just going through all these chapters. And this is the schedule of all this semester. And when I say week of January 14, it means that week starts with Monday, January 14. And we have two classes in that day, uh, week, Monday <coughs> Wednesday. Lucky you, next Monday is holiday. <laughs> so one of my students said, it doesn't benefit out because we have a due date for our assignment. Mm -hmm. So really, just look at the positive part of that, good thing about that, not about assignment. But actually your assignment will be January 28th. Like still you have seven days after your holiday. So, yeah. So, January 14th, January 21, January 14th, this week we are going through these two Chapter one and a syllabus sampling. So we already, you know, finished this. And uh, um, first exam, February 25. And uh, here is another break. And <laughs> second exam and final exam. And after final exam, we don't have any class. I don't know. So the student asked me, really. They asked me if we have class after final exam. I said, I know I would not go to the class. I'm not going to go to the class after final. So before each exam, we will have a review section. So unfortunately, spring semesters are so kind of, um, what, what should I say? We are always in rush in the spring semester. Imagine if we have any kind of uh, snow or bad weather and classes will be canceled. Luckily, I hope we don't have all of those things because I don't want to be in rush. And these first three chapters are difficult. And I don't want any really, I don't want any um, kind of closure. So anyway, um, probably, we will have one whole section as a review section before each exam. And in that uh, section, I will review, I uh, will bring lots of good examples uh, of questions uh, similar to the exam. And um, I will uh, review all the you know important things that you should uh, study for that exam. That would be a really informative uh, uh, class. Um, so, so this is the schedule, as you see, everything is already there, and you know uh, what we are going to do, for example, the uh, fourth week of semester, or by end of uh, first month. So, um, how, how, how long do we have? We have 15 minutes, huh? 14, 6.45, okay. So do you have any questions? Sure, yes. Can we just go, so we can go get started now? Or like, I think I just go. So I didn't get started on the longer? Oh, I thought he's. <laughs> Some of you thought he's saying I have to start teaching right now. I don't want to teach today. We got permission. No, I'm just kidding. Now I understood what you said. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I okay. said if you know you are going to stay in this class, just open that package and you know have okay. your access. You know, and just start on first math review. And then you can start on uh, learning here for chapter one, and you're good. Did you make that start with the curves? The, the front, what is that? Curves? Learning curve for chapter one. Start with that first. Yeah, I start with that to see what I'm going to, you know, talk about. Yeah, you I'm will good. have a kind of idea that yeah. what will happen on Wednesday or what I'm going to talk about on Wednesday. Like so that's a good thing. I don't even know what economics is about. You know, I think it's about. Are you statistics? Statistics, are you? really? You're in a statistic class statistics. and you talk about economy? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> That's a huge insult. Okay. Right. No, now I will talk about the statistic. What is the basic statistic? Now I will talk about that. We have 15 minutes. 
So I will go, uh, it's a kind of, you know, this five, 10 minutes that I'm going to talk, it will be like me convincing you a statistic is good. If someone, you know, convince you a statistic is a difficult class, you don't need that blah, blah, I'm going to now convince you a statistic is good. And why you need a statistic class, okay? So statistic, a stat 145. So a statistic, you don't have to write down anything because it's just kind of um, overall or general knowledge about a statistic and it's not going to be in chapters or anything like that. So a statistic is a knowledge of data. Data are numbers. And um, we use a statistic to interpret data, to know about data. And uh, I will talk about different, you know, um, different, different part in our life that we can use a statistic. So first and most important that I can say mainly we use a statistic for is academia. So in academia, when you are going to continue your education, even not just continuing your education, in bachelor degree, there are some of courses, um, you have some instructors, they ask you to, uh, maybe, you know, do a research or, you know, make a uh, PowerPoint presentation or have some, you know, uh, this kind of, um, overall, I can say research, yeah, research or data analysis. Um, in academia, mostly we are going to use a statistic for research, either undergraduate courses or master courses or PhD level courses. Um, in PhD, definitely to write down your proposal, uh, proposal and then thesis, you have to have a section completely, you know, a statistic. Uh, doesn't matter if your field is like history or, you know, your field is like, you know, um, education or anything like that. I had a PhD student who came to me and, you know, they needed help for statistic a part of their thesis. So academia, definitely if you are continuing your education, you will see a statistic. You have to have a knowledge of data. Uh, you should be able to use all these information I'm going to provide you in this class for doing your research. So another part of our life that we may see a statistic is uh, something like uh, daily life. When you watch news, sometimes you see there are these fancy graphs and they are showing this fancy graph with all these data. And uh, maybe at some point it's so complicated to look at that. It will be like confusing. But as soon as you're done with this class, even after three chapters, you're able to understand that, even interpret those graphs, you know, and understand what they are talking about. So news. And then another part of our life. Most of you have to file your taxes, okay? If you have a knowledge of data, you don't have to pay 200, 100, or 300 dollars something to some people to file your taxes. You can do that on your own, and it's so easy, so easy. So, tax. Oh, sorry. These are our neighbors sometimes. <laughs> okay, on the wall, be quiet. Yeah. So each class as I'm moving, there is a problem. So I chose this class this semester because my previous class was in Gerley Hall down a stair basement and there was an awful smell uh, by end of semester and I had to move all my classes to nursing building. And it was a really horrible situation. We had a headache and we couldn't you know, sit down in that class. And it was always noisy. And then I chose this class because you cannot see people walking through that window. So you're all looking at me. But other classes you see in Calvin Hall, people are passing by, it's a distract, you know, kind of huge distraction. And now I have this problem. <laughs> so, and you didn't see me, did I? Uh, I think in, you were in Gurley Hall, yeah. yeah. You were in Gurley Hall, sometimes uh, some students would make noise outside and I would go outside like this. And then I would kind of shout at them. 
So it was that. So those students never want to take my class because I was shouting at them. I was so harsh to them. I, would, I don't want to do that to this <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm so sensitive to this kind of noises. Okay, so let's continue. So I talked about taxes. <coughs> you can use a statistic to do your taxes. And then let's say some of you say, okay, I'm not going to deal with tax. I'm not going to uh, continue my education, do research. I want to uh, be, be a businessman and have a you know, business for myself. And then I will tell you, yes, for sure you need a statistic even if you want to open a business for yourself. Why? Because not all of us have the money to, you know, put all the money in our business. Most of us need to get money from government, some other organization, and they call that grant. Okay? So to get a grant, you should have a really strong proposal. So proposal, grant proposal, is something that helps you to prove that because of some numbers, the previous or similar company had, I can predict this happens to my future business and these are all the numbers that prove that and support all my you know, hypothesis. And if your uh, proposal, grant proposal is based, off, based on data and some evidence, definitely you are getting a really good amount of money either for a non-profit business or other different kind of business. So you see that you will need a statistic, maybe almost I can say everywhere in this life. And as we start uh, solving some problem and going through some chapter, you will see some exciting questions like life, you know, question, like real life examples that we are going to solve in this class and then the conclusion will be really uh, kind of interesting and at some point so shocking how we could solve this kind of you know problem real life example using a statistic and as soon as we practice two three times solving this kind of problems practical you know problems will be so easy for you so you can use a statistic anywhere everywhere i can say so did i convince you yeah. Okay, good. Oh, also nursing student. How many nursing student I have? So have you taken your um, exam? T's exam. Is they call that T's exam. T's or T's? Yeah, so that exam. I had many students after my statistic class, they came to me and said, that thing you talked about in class was in the exam. And that thing I talked about in class was so difficult so difficult if i didn't talk about that they wouldn't have any idea what this question came from because i talked about that and they could you know find a relation and they could understand oh this question we could solve it if you know we wrote down everything so write down everything and also i will tell you when the time came i will tell you for example this question maybe is in your exam and you know i will give you a kind of hint and uh, most of the statistical questions are, it's not that difficult, but um, some people when, uh, with math background, they cannot solve them because there are some tricks, something, you know, that just a statistician know. So there is a really huge difference between math and statistics. So not, you cannot, you know, ask a mathematics uh, professor to uh, answer those kind of questions in that uh, nursing uh, exam. And it's kind of especially for a statistician to answer those questions. Okay, let me see if I talked about everything. Oh, the other thing in a statistic, uh, in real world maybe you see, on TV there are lots of advertisements sometimes showing this graph numbers to you. Some of companies or organizations, they use a statistic to mislead people. They use wrong data, they manipulate data to give people wrong information to encourage people to buy their product. But as soon as you know how everything works, maybe you can understand, oh, this doesn't match, like this graph with these numbers, and you can easily understand they are like uh, trying to manipulate data and uh, trying to you know, mislead people and encourage people to buy their product, okay? 
So this is the uh, last thing I wanted to talk about. And do you have any questions? Sure. I have a request. Can you pronounce your first name again? Andy Shea. I had that question actually. Um, I don't. Yeah, I I really don't know. I I mean, I'm. Yeah, I don't have any problem with you know calling me uh, with my first name or last name. No, not at all. Yeah, whatever you you feel more comfortable. You know. Um, any other question? Or like a nickname? No, nickname no, because you know why? Because some people call me Andy, and Andy is a man. Oh, I don't like that. My, my, uh, actually, do you know what's the meaning of my name? Let me tell you. You don't know. Is the, did I tell you I'm Persian? Oh. Yeah. So, my name is Timothy. My mom put me in this situation. All my life I'm thinking, <laughs> really. Name has really, really huge impact in your life. I know just because my name is that I had to study all my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is my, I mean, actually my name is kind of a rare name even in my um, country because this is a really, um, and mostly educated people, you know, choose this and know the meaning of this name, and they, uh, their children have this name. So even uh, in my country, it's so rare. So my mom um, is. Um, so if I tell you uh, what is my mom's field of study, you already know. You should know. Uh, you will think because of my mom now I'm here. So my mom's field is mathematics and economic. So she's like incredibly smart. I cannot even explain how smart she is. I mean, I really never liked math uh, in my life until I became a teacher. And you may never, you know, could believe that, but really, I never liked math mathematics. I, I always had a good score because my mom was practicing, practicing, you know, working with me, you know. So I find my math scores always really good. Uh, but I never liked that until I became a teacher. Uh, kind of, uh, it's a kind of life changing at some point. So anyway, do you have any class? <laughs> I think your class was the only class I talked too much. <laughs> yeah. Any question? See, I told you for some reason my evening classes are like, I don't know, I have more energy in the evening. I mean, it doesn't make sense at all. There's something weird about me, probably. <laughs> okay, we'll see you on Wednesday, and we will start chapter one. Oh, print out the PDF for chapter one. Bring the PDF, printed PDF, and then whenever I say something extra, you can write down in those pages, okay? So we'll see you on Wednesday. Uh -huh. Good night, take care. Hello, my name is Brandon Holtzoy, and I'm a tutor at TRIO Student Support Services, and this is Kujar Ramirez. He's also a tutor too. So what TRIO is, it's a federally funded program, and it's just to help students, you know, go from a two-year university to four-year through, you know, like tutoring, mentoring, just academic advisement. And we have our own advisors there that you can go through. Once you're enrolled in the program, you can go see them to like schedule your classes instead of you know wait like long time in like the SSTC building and just yeah we have tutoring you can walk in or you can make appointments it depends and we have math tutors English and there's student staff it's tutors and yeah chemistry whatever you need and the criteria to enter you have to be a first generation student. So what that means is like neither of your parents had a college degree before your 18th birthday. So that's just one criteria. And either they'll look at like financial, financial statement. So like if you bring in like a tax form, we'll look at that to identify if you're eligible for the program. 
and also if you have some type of disability, learning disability or any document disability, that also works. You don't have to have all criteria, just if you meet one of the, of the three. And we also do, one of the only places on campus to offer free printing. You know, a lot of places they charge like, what, 10 cents a page or something. So we do free printing. And the program, there's no cost. It's all just free. So all you gotta do is fill out an application and then our director will go through your app and just you know, see if you meet all the requirements needed. So when you want an application, just link. Any questions? All right, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.